All right, so now that we got that total glue thing working, we're gonna actually wanna break down a little bit. We don't want the whole thing to stay as one big piece. Let's instead create two sets of constraints. One that will define strong clustering between pieces, kind of how like we did in the first lesson where we said, we kind of randomly went through and, and arbitrarily said, hey, you know, some of these lines, some of these lines are super like infinitely strong and they'll never break and the other lines are super weak. Let's do it in a more interesting way and create two different glue constraints in the process. Those two different glue constraints will be, again, super strong interior bonds, super strong rather, interior bonds within certain clusters and then weak bonds between those clusters. This is a pretty cool technique. So to do that, make a point wrangler and we're gonna take, a, we're gonna make a noise to actually say, to actually determine which so-called cluster that they're in. Of course, this is not clusters as the Voronoi, noise, the Voronoi fracture makes it. This is gonna be our own clever uh, clustering algorithm. So here we are with the points, and we're gonna run a attribute, actually let's run an attribute uh, VOP. So, make a, a point VOP or an attribute VOP, it's the same thing. And we'll call this clustering. The reason why I want to use a VOP instead of a wrangle this time is because whenever we have to deal with the various noises, which, which there are many, um, they're, more e they're easier to use on this because they tend to have a lot of uh, parameters and stuff. And I don't feel like coding all those parameters. Now Voronoi noise, look at that. Voronoi again. This time, not Voronoi fracture, this time it's a Voronoi noise. What does Voronoi noise do? Well, it's a 3D noise where it takes in a position and it's like a 3D texture that it kind of exists everywhere in space. And then we can output something. We output this seed actually. I'm gonna drive, it's, that's some integer as you can see from the blue arrow. I'm gonna make it, take that, make a color, and then hopefully you can see, actually not the position, uh, the color. This is what the noise is getting us. Kind of hard to see. Let's try another approach. I'm going to make a box at the origin here. I'm just going to output points and I'm just I'm going to make a whole bunch of divisions. So I'm just basically making a just a whole big old box of points for you. Now these points, I'm going to have them go through here. So now we're starting to see something. Still kind of hard to see though. I'm coloring these points based on that Voronoi uh, function that you saw there. Perhaps we need more points. Now I can kind of start to see it. Let's do even more points. So what are we seeing? We're seeing a Voronoi pattern emerge because I have so many points here and they're all sampling the noise at different spots. You can see this pattern emerge. If I go into the uh, this thing here, and let's say I make the frequency be not quite as crazy. And I, I'll even promote it so that we can, uh, we can change it more easily up here on the surface. So I promoted the Voronoi frequency and there it is. If I said like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, it's making the, the noise bigger. So in essence, we are, we're using Voronoi, the idea of Voronoi that I explained in the first lesson to create these regions. And each of these regions has a different integer value associated with them. Now we're, we're, sh we're viewing them as color right now, but we could also just straight export it and, and store it as some attribute which is exactly what the reason why we're doing this in the first place. So here it is. I'm going to call it cluster. And so you can see how for each unique color, which is also really the same unique value seed coming out here in the first place, for each unique color, all of the points are going to have the same integer. So let's see that. Over here in points, we call the cluster. There are these crazy integer values that are all over the place. You can see they're they're clearly not sequential. They're just 
random essentially, not random of course, but they're unique and that a lot of them will have the same value and then they'll switch suddenly. So each of these regions, which is a better way of thinking of it, we're regioning space into these different values, which is a really powerful tool to use here and elsewhere when you're making your cool Houdini algorithm somewhere down the line. Now, of course, we're not trying to do this to a box of points. We're trying to do this to, we're trying to region these points. We're regioning the actual simulation objects and saying, hey, if your simulation points all have the same cluster value, you are the same cluster. Now, these clusters are way too big. Um, so we could try one. It's still pretty too big. Um, and maybe even a better way of visualizing it is maybe perhaps not on the constraints themselves. Let's copy onto our actual original pieces. And because the simulation's pulling from this, the pieces null, we could do anything we want after it, and it won't affect the sim, because this stuff will never make it into the sim. But anyway, uh, it's gonna take the CD point attribute, copy it over, then let's promote it to be primitive, because the pact seems to like that. And then we should see it. So this is essentially what we're doing. These are our clusters now. Everybody who has the same color will be the same cluster. These pieces are still too big though. So I'm gonna say maybe to two. So there we go. Frequency is two. This is pretty good. Small clusters, wonderful. And we're, we're viewing it as color, but more importantly, it's being stored in this cluster int integer here.